Let's talk about our democracy for a minute. <laughs> but let's do it in a way that makes the snowflakes' heads explode. Let me be clear before this podcast begins. We are loud, loud proud, proud, and do not give a fuck. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Real and raw political and social commentary. The freedom to oppress the rights of other people is not liberty. You shit-eating moron. Ah, the smell of freedom of speech. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. And this is Tony Michaels. Hey, Tony, fuck them. The juice has run out of pulp. <laughs> oh, man. There are just some American famous or infamous Americans, the way you look at it, famous at one point, infamous now, um, that are going to pass away, die, take a dirt nap, whatever the hell you want to say. And the uh, entire American public is going to go, yeah, it's been cool. It's been cool. Uh, O.J. Simpson is dead. Wish I were talking about another person who was uh, famous in the 90s for trying to um, grab women by the pussy. Um, I, I watched the video this morning with O.J. Simpson um, where he's describing him and Trump. They had the same taste in, in women back in the day. They were wingmen. That's right. They were wingmen. Uh, Donald Trump and O.J. Simpson, the juice, the murderer. Hmm. Wonder if it uh, they ever hung out with Jeffrey Epstein at the same exact time. You know, had a trio, right? I don't know. Probably. I well, what the fuck is Juice gonna do to me for saying that, right? I'm sure. I'm sure the Juice had met Jeffrey Epstein. If he was hanging around Donald Trump, you goddamn well better believe he met Jeffrey Epstein. Who knows? Oh, boy. So, uh, O.J. Simpson is dead. I don't know if that's like uh, an ending to that saga or not. Are we going to get uh, more O.J. Simpson movies? Do you, have you ever seen the uh, QB Gooding Jr. O.J. Simpson movie? It's all right. It's kind of shit. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of like a uh, made-for-TV series type thing. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> but, you know, uh, maybe we'll get some more... Um, OJ content going. Uh, there's a ton of memes going around, of course, uh, about Trump and a Bronco. Because uh, OJ's dead, so, you know, you're not going to have a Bronco chase with OJ anymore, right? Hmm, boy. Um, let's get down to business, though. I'm not going to um, run laps about OJ's dirt nap too much. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? You know, Fuck cancer, but, you know, fuck O.J. Simpson, too, right? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Because apparently he died from cancer is uh, the thing. So, but, um, you know, like people are saying in the chat, karma's kind of a bitch. It's kind of a bitch, you know? And uh, when you, when you, when, <laughs> when you're a piece of fucking shit, uh, maybe life comes at you hard. You know what I mean? So I have a, today's a special day, by the way. Um, I want I want to tell you it it is a special day. It's not just O.J. Simpson's uh, death day, uh, his dirt nap day, um, and it's it, it is a special person's birthday. Now, this person has been in this audience since the almost the very first episode. I believe maybe the first episode. She can she can tell you the facts on that. Um, but MJ, our moderator here, and MJ has been a moderator. She's an OG. She's Tony Michaels OG. I'm talking about original fucking gangster, okay? MJ was in the audience when I had four people watching on the counter. And I, I'm going to be honest, my cell phone was one and my laptop was the other one watching, okay? So, like, MJ was here when there was two people here listening to my bullshit every, every time I turn on the microphone. She's been, she's been here since the very beginning. And she's still a believer in the fucking fam. If I'm and if I'm correct, she actually had uh, a lot to do with branding this group, the fucking fam. Uh, that I think that was originally, um, originally from 
MJ's mind. I believe so. I believe so. And um, MJ is, is, is special because of that. Because she really set the tone for the chat. And she really set the tone for this community and, and this group of people to, to get in, in, in the fight for democracy. And I, I know I'm, um, I'm the one standing behind the microphone, but I would be nothing without you guys. I would be nothing without you guys. And, uh, you, you know, if you didn't listen to my bullshit every day, this wouldn't, this thing wouldn't exist. And without MJ here, I may I may have never had audience members. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but from day one, she believed in the messaging. She believed in me. And I want to thank her for that. And you guys should thank her as well and tell her happy birthday. Uh, we love MJ here. I have a special place in my heart and for this microphone for MJ. So I want you guys to uh, give her a shout out today and make this the best birthday Um Best birthday she possibly, possibly could have. So, and I know the fuckum fam is good at giving birthday wishes. So, wish uh, MJ a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. MJ, you are special here at the fuckum fam. So, it is. It's happy MJ week. That's right. Happy MJ week. <laughs> The rest of the week is going to be MJ week. Speaking of the rest of the week, I want to describe what's going to happen today. You know, on Thursdays, we have Cliff Schechter here as a guest. Now, I've been cutting off the broadcast on YouTube. But seeing that it's MJ's birthday and she likes uh, YouTube better than she likes Twitch, I think what we're going to try to experiment today is I'm not going to cut it off um, at the 30 minutes. We are going to carry uh, Cliff Schechter's interview here on YouTube. So I want you to stick around for that if you're on YouTube. You're not going to get cut off at the 30-minute mark. Um, we will go back to that um, when, we, um, when we come back tomorrow. So on Friday, April 12th. So I, I, just, I just wanted to give you... Um, a good sense of what would be happening here today on the YouTube channel as we talk about Make America 1864 again, as you've seen the headline. Um, Republicans in Arizona, they wanted to pretend like they didn't actually want to take us back to 1864, but I guess yesterday they're like, no, nah, we're definitely going to do that. We're definitely going to do that. So they tried to, they tried to like put a stopgap uh, on turning back the clock in Arizona to slavery days. You see, I don't know if you know this, but um, they want to make women property, but they also in 1864, black people were property, too. I don't know if you know that. Um, and I know I know a lot of people are probably going to, um, you know, criticize and say, well, Tony, you can't really conflate the two. Um, but I'm not conflating them. I'm, what I'm telling you is, is, is they're telling you what they want. The Republicans, the MAGA, the America First Nazis are telling you what they want by doing this. OK, that's what they're doing is they're telling you loud and proud the Nazi pot part out loud what they want to do. And what they want to do is turn the clock back where only white men had rights. Um, we watched the video of Dusty Deaver saying it yesterday, we're probably going to play that again. I uh, want to play it for Cliff again. I, I don't know if Cliff has seen that clip, uh, Dusty Devers. It seems like, um, you know, we bring to light here on the Tony Michaels podcast. I know uh, Right Wing Watch does a lot of work in uh, tracking these motherfuckers down, these, uh, these white Christian nationalists, tracking them down and keeping an eye on them and making sure that the world knows about it. But they just kind of post it on Twitter and they leave it at that. And there's not very many uh, big accounts out there. And, and commentators out there that actually grab a hold of this stuff and make commentary around it because it's actually the problem, right? When we've been talking about it a lot over the last two years is that white Christian nationalism is the fucking issue. It is the disease that is rotting the brains of our, of our fellow countrymen. Now it's not a big percentage. Um, it's, it's a big number. It's not a big percentage. It's probably about 15%. 
I, I know it feels like it's more, but they're always the the dumbest are always the fucking loudest, aren't they? I mean, I'm pretty loud. I'm pretty fucking dumb. Now, I, 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 you know, I can be dumb. I'm stupid on occasions, but I'm not an idiot, right? So that's what makes me, you know, able to manufacture thoughts when I rub brain cells together and come up with the idea that, hey, maybe liberty should be for everyone, not just for white guys like me. Um, so, but they don't have the possibility of manufacturing thoughts. They just don't have enough brain cells left. And they are proving it time and time and time again. And that is why I want to actually make sure that people understand that it is not just women's rights that they want to turn the clock back on. It's not just women's rights. And, and, I, and I know that is going to be the shiv that we're going to use to um, give um, <laughs> the Republican Party an OJ-style dirt nap. Um, can we OJ the, um, the GOP? I don't know. Um, you know, I actually think that the, the Republican Party is fucking dead. Uh, the Nazis have taken over. And um, we're just dragging around a dead body around this country, right? And there's people like Paul Ryan and Adam Kinzinger and Mitt Romney and Liz Cheney and others, Bill Barr, trying to revive that dead body. Well, it's dead. It's fucking dead. So, uh, but it's obvious what they want to do, what MAGA wants to do. MAGA wants to take us back to a time where they can actually say who and what and when and where people get rights and liberty. And they want, they want, they want people who look like me to do that. You know, pale skin, look like a fucking saltine cracker, blue eyes and blonde hair. I mean, they're full on fucking Nazis. And and, and listen, um, finally, finally on uh, the, the, the possibility of the rhetoric and the commentary that, Hey, they're, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna kill you. Um, that's what they're going to they're going to come for you and your family has leaked onto mainstream media. Right. This uh, this this idea that we've been propagating. That's right. This is pro-democracy propaganda here. And I want you to understand something about this, this idea that these Nazis will come and and kill you and your family, because I, I, I believe that we stand in their way of doing that. You guys are highly engaged. Um, not just not just online, right? You guys are highly engaged in real life. People are making phone calls. People are knocking doors. People are getting involved as far as registration, um, getting people to sign petitions uh, for women's rights to get, get to get uh, codifying women's health care rights uh, on state ballots. Um, this audience is very highly engaged. And I want to make sure that when we say things and we use rhetoric to our advantage to win an election that we follow it up by that sounds really scary tony it's a really scary prospect because i told you about a conversation that i had with a friend of mine where i told him not to vote for rfk to just vote for trump and the reason why is because when when um the ss if trump were to win which he's not going to we stand in his way we we are we are the coalition that stands in his way and our coalition is much stronger much bigger uh, and we actually have the wind at our backs if you're paying attention to what popularity contest in uh, just ideology might say. But here's the thing is that I told the story yesterday about how they might drag you out into the yard and they would execute you. Um, and it, it, that that is how Nazis operate. That is how these Nazis will operate. That is really what the foundation of Project 2025 is. Um, that's what it is. Now, what can we do about it, right? Because um, that's kind of scary thoughts. That's kind of scary thoughts that our country would turn into Nazi Germany overnight. It's possible. It is completely possible. I, I don't think it's likely. It is highly unlikely. And the reason why is because of your engagement. And so what I want to start doing is when we when we really ratchet up the vitriol uh, here on the Tony Michaels podcast, we want to give you an outlet. Uh, I feel like I'm a pretty good rabble rouser. I feel like that's what I'm good at, right? I'm pretty good at rabble rousing. Now, a lot of people don't like these words. 
right? They don't like the, the left. Oh, this fucking pisses the left off. When you say words like propaganda and rabble rousing, they get all like, oh my God, you can't say that stuff. You got to use different words. Well, fuck you. Fuck you. Because what we're going to do is we're not going to stop using those words. We're not going to. Um, we're going to tell the truth. We're going to make it out front. We're going to show you exactly what you need to know. We're not going to bullshit you with data and statistics and polls. And We don't need to do that here. This is common sense type stuff. Most Americans just want a decent fucking wage. They don't want to go broke because of a medical bill. And most families don't want to worry about is mom going to die because she's having a certain problem with her pregnancy, right? These are certain types of things that most Americans fucking want. But how are we going to do it? Where are we going to engage? Well, that's up to you. You can engage online or in real life. And I actually suggest that you would do both. I actually suggest that you would do both. And some people are calling it good trouble in the chat here. And it absolutely is fucking good trouble. And we need to cause more and more and more good trouble. And I think a way to do that is to gather up on Discord. Now, I know I've been really uh, um, hitting you hard with the Discord. And I know a lot of people are like, Tony, shut the fuck up about Discord. But I'm let me tell you something about Discord. That we can actually use this as a tool uh, for you to engage. Okay. Cause this is, this is a tool that can use in real life engagement. I don't know if you know this, but there are folks over there on Discord that have meetings every week talking about what they're doing in real life, what they can do in real life. There's so many resources in the library of democracy and our, our local mother over there on Discord, the mighty librarian. She is a great resource, and the Library of Democracy is a great resource of how you can engage in real life, okay? Because we're up against people who want to take us back to slavery, all right? That, that's that's, their, that's their, their position. That's their policy, is that they want to go back to 1864, probably further, probably further is where they want to go. And again, we we are standing in their way. And there are so many great people over on Discord that are willing to point you in the right direction. People who are experiencing and getting the experience of on the ground in real life engagement right there in Discord. They can tell you what they're doing in their communities. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that's what you have to do in your community. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what you have to do for your election. To stop them from dragging you out in the yard and killing you and your entire family. We can stop them. We can stop them. And we don't have to, we don't have to result to violence yet. And I say yet because I'm I want to make this point. Because MAGA and Trump keep saying if they lose, then there will be violence. And I want I want to tell them and I want to reassure. The mega Nazis. That if you cheat and you and, and you try some funny shit and you fuck up our election, you fuck up our constitution. That's when you may get your real civil war. But for now, for now, we will settle with the battle at the ballot box. So I want you to sharpen your battle axes. And one way to sharpen that battle axe is is to go to the Discord. And it is to participate with those people and engage with those people and have conversations about how to engage. Sharpening your battle axe is engaging. That's what we're doing when we're engaging in our democracy, whether it's online, digitally, or it's in real life. And sometimes in real life means digital. You can send a shitload of emails. You can, you really can. That's a digital way to engage. A lot of your Congress folks, your senators, these state senators, these governors, they have emails and their inboxes can be filled because you are the constituents. It is an in real life digital way to engage. 
And there's all sorts of ways to engage. There are so many ballot, uh, uh, excuse me, referendum petitions out there in states that you're in. I know a lot of people come here to listen to this show because they're a blue dot in a red state, right? And the reason why is because I'm a blue dot in a red state. And I think they, you know, it kind of, they relate to the language that I use because of that. And there's so many, there's so many ballot petitions out there that could be signed in the states that you're in right now. Not only could be signed, but you could be helping getting people to sign those petitions who want that on a ballot. How do you find that? Where do you find that? Go to Discord. Go to Discord. I know it sounds like, oh, Tony, I should just Google it, but I'm telling you, there's so many people that can point you in the right direction in Discord that are doing it right now. They're doing it on the ground right now. And they're they're right there. They're right there at your disposal. Some of these some of these references are right at your disposal to sharpen your battle axe. If you want to know how to register voters and sharpen your battle axe that way, by God, we got the sharpening stone over at the Library of Democracy. Because every state's a little different. They all have different laws. They all have got different styles of how you <laughs> of how you do these things. We know some states actually have uh, certain types of mail-in ballots. Some of them are like absentee ballots. Some people have to register by a certain point in certain states. All that's right there at your fingertips in Discord with the Library of Democracy. And not only is it at your fingertips for for you to reference, there's people there to help you. Right there in the library, in the Discord that are willing to help you. Now, they may help you find how to register voters in your state. And then they may be like, hey, you want some fucking crazy funny memes? Some Trump crack to spread around the internet too? It's awesome. <laughs> There's all sorts of fuckery going on in the Discord. And again, maybe I haven't done uh, a good enough job of selling the Discord. But that is really what I mean by sharpening your battle axe is go, go have sharpening parties, right? And they're doing it right now in discord. They do the book club. That's a, sh you're sharpening your battle axe. Then, I mean, we just got done doing hit them where it hurts. This is a guidebook on how to sharpen your battle axe to get ready for war at the ballot box, right? This is a sharpening stone right here. This isn't just a fucking book. This is the guide. We're, they're going to be reading Rule White Rage. Another another sharpening stone to sharpen that battle axe in the war at the ballot box. And we'll be doing so many more. And there's so many ways to get in and engage in your democracy. And get ready for November. Because as soon as November is over, folks, as soon as the polls close, right? As soon as the polls close, our eyes have to be turned to the next one. That's right. Even before the votes are counted, we have to turn our eyes to the next one. Because democracy doesn't begin and end in November. That's not when it begins and ends. It begins and ends with you. That's where democracy begins and ends. With you. And I am so... I, I am so fucking proud of this community. That you guys have been able to do all these sorts of things. Just by the pure inspiration of this show. And it's what motivates me to keep going. And I know we're having some, you know, some hiccups here and some bumps there and YouTube's putting me in jail and I can't broadcast, but the first 30 minutes on YouTube and you hate Twitch and, you know, I, I get, it. I get, it. I get, it. you don't like when I say certain things about certain people, but it's the truth. So what are you going to do? But at the end of the day. At the end of the day, I will keep yelling and screaming in this microphone to give you that inspiration to do those engagements, to sharpen your weapons of democracy. Because you are the weapons of democracy. 
You are. You are the battle axes. And I, I guarantee goddamn to you, today you may feel like you're helpless and you can't do anything to save this country. But let me tell you something. You get in the Discord and you engage with the fuck'em fam, and I guarantee goddamn to you, by November, you'll be an expert and you'll be welcoming people into this community and you'll be teaching them how to sharpen their battle axe and engage in their democracy. I guarantee goddamn to it. And it's the one reason why I keep going. Rather I, rather I have to post the show somewhere else or half of it here, half of it there. I can't air it here. We're going to keep going. And I'm going to do it the way that it needs to be done. I give you my promise in that. And there's some great things coming to this community. Some fantastic things coming to this community. And I'm kind of glad that we got rid of all the fucking snowflakes. Now, the snowflakes will be back, and they'll be a little tougher. Because what the snowflakes are going to do is they're going to be like, Oh, Tony, just he he's that guy who makes fun of people. And he just, he's all chuckles and laughs. And he, he, he makes fun of legal analysts who don't know what they're talking about. Are they lying to us? There is a method to the madness. There is a method. To this madness. Most of the method to the madness is laid out right in this book. I I had no no none input into this. The only reason why this book feels like it belongs on this show is because me and, and Doc here think a lot alike. She is she literally literally is the better version of me. <laughs> Way better. Number one, she's a woman. So that makes her automatically better. But she's way more educated. She's fucking smart as shit. And she's sharp as an axe. A battle axe for democracy. But it's because we think alike. I don't know how it happened. I I, I swear to you, that it, it was just like the universe aligned on that one. But it's because it makes sense. And because it works. It works. It fucking works. Um, Brian asked a, a very unique question here. Yes, Brian, you can get into Discord with the phone. It's how most people use Discord. You just download the Discord app and you can get right into the Discord server. You just download the Discord app. You go to thetonymichaels.com. You pan down. And you click on this link right here. It's the Discord server link. Once you download that app, it'll you will be able to join the Discord server. And I know it's a little new, but trust me, if you can use Facebook and you can use Twitter or Instagram, whatever social media website you're using, threads, Discord is just as easy. Once you get on our server, you will see all the rooms that you can go in to talk to people. There's a whole list of rooms some of them are just text. Some of them you drop photos. Some of those rooms you actually go in and you talk to people on the phone. Have you ever wanted to talk to someone on the phone in the YouTube chat? You can talk to them on the phone in Discord. It's a community. It's where we're building this movement. It's where we are sharpening the battle axes for democracy. And you are those battle axes. You are those weapons to go to war at the battle, battle at the ballot box so that we can win this November for democracy over autocracy. And it is crucial. It is crucial that we connect with each other. And it is a it is a perfect way for us to connect right outside this show. And I know, I know the Discord server, the universe kind of revolves around this two-hour show every day. But I'm I'm not I'm not the 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 famous guy in the Discord that you'd think. I'm I'm just a dude that's really good at talking into a microphone. And I'm giving you the opportunity to come into the Discord and connect with so many people who are like-minded and want to make sure that their children and their grandchildren, your children and your grandchildren, have the democracy 
that you have today and let's make it a little fucking better, right? Let's not go back to 1864. Let's progress into the future. That would be nice. So go to the TonyMichaels.com and go down to the Discord server and find all your friends in the fuck'em fam and go sharpen your battle axes together. Because I'm telling you, there's great resources in that Discord server with the Library of Democracy and the actual fuck'em fam. They know some shit, man. They know some shit. And, and they, you know the great part about the fuck'em fam is most people are kind of like me on the truth. They're like, hey, if I don't know something, I ain't going to say something. I'll find it out. We'll go look for it. We'll figure out what the hell the truth is. And we'll get to the bottom of it. So go to the TonyMichaels.com. Sharpen your battle axe by going to the Discord server. And become those battle axes of democracy. And become those weapons of expertise and election fuckery. And don't go anywhere. Because we're going to have Cliff Schechter on really soon, I promise. So don't go anywhere on YouTube. I promise YouTube I'm not going to cut you off. I promise I'm not going to cut. Not today. Uh, maybe tomorrow. But not today. Stick around. We'll be right back right after this. We'll be right back. Mark, 60 seconds. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Hey, gang. Join your favorite Discord miscreants at the Dive Bar of Democracy. That's M-O-C-K. Every Friday after book club and get the weekend started right. One of our hosts will surprise our panel with three topics no one knows about ahead of time, so they're just as surprised as you'll be. That's every Friday after book club, fuck em fam. See you crazy kids there. Catch Tony's Twitch stream, The Shit List Roundup, at twitch.tv slash the Tony Michaels. We're back to the king of brilliance. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Be the battle axe. That is what um, Karen has put into the sh chat, and I fucking love that, Karen. I love it. Be the battle axe. You are the battle axes in this pro-democracy coalition. You are the battle axes. So when I say sharpen your battle axe, it means get your mind right and get straight because we're going to get ready to fucking crush these 1864 fascists. We're going to do it together. I promise you. So get ready. Sharpen your battle axes because we're going to go to civil war, baby. We're going to go to civil war at the bat battle at the ballot box. It is the first battle in this civil war that temple wants and you are the battle axes and i want you to get sharp and one way to get sharp is to listen to this guy you may know him you may have seen him here you know you may have seen him he's got this uh, youtube channel thing he's doing you know what i mean he's got this youtube he's got these videos that he makes sometimes i'm in them sometimes we make great content here and he can't help but cut it and put it over his channel because and half the time, we're just fucking giggling because these fucking fascists are so goddamn silly. Cliff Schechter, my friend, how are you today? I'm fucking giggling already. Um, <laughs> dude, man. Are, are you I'm, giggling because you had a glass of orange juice this morning and you realized when you finished the glass of orange juice that that may be the last, that might be glass, the last of glass of orange juice? Of OJ. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> oh, my God. You know I, actually, cool? I actually used to drink orange juice a lot when I was a kid. Um, but I, I don't drink orange juice anymore uh, much. You I know like orange really juice. really kind of cool, though? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if, the, if the grave doesn't fit, he's still fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it, that is true. How, so, you know. How, how, how deep do they dig the grave for a son of a bitch like, like OJ? <laughs> I mean, is it shallow I mean, or... I don't know, man. You, I've seen some of these zombie flicks pile a whole bunch of shit on top of there. I'd say like some tractor trailers, you know. So was, yeah, right. I, well, I would imagine maybe I would some imagine. Hertz cars, if you will. Right. Uh, you know, that's what's happening right now. That's probably his torture in hell for his life lived. Is Satan's probably like, okay, motherfucker, run through this airport and fucking jump over those fucking uh, seats and get to your plane in time. And every time you fail. We're going to let Ron Goldman slash you. 
There, there's so many good OJ memes this morning. I shouldn't even way. say that. You're know, disrespectful to Ron Goldman. I'll say a random person. Because I shouldn't <laughs> even bring up the names of people that this piece of shit victimized. Um, but in any case. Uh, uh, there you know are so many good. There is so many good uh, OJ memes today. Uh, this one comes to mind. Uh, we'll just run through them here real quick while we're talking about OJ. Here, here's one here. Um, it looks like OJ doesn't have the Bronco anymore, so it's a new set of criminals that are uh, trying yeah. to escape away from I mean, the uh, from the authorities there. And that's a that's a great meme. Maybe uh, if we if we could like figure out, you know, I I remember well because I know my my. Uh, by pop culture, I think I remember. Well, 1.21 gigawatts was what uh, the professor needed to take the 1. DeLorean 1. back 21 in time. gigawatts? And then so Marty says, plan. what the hell is a gigawatt? That's what he said. So here's my plan, though, dude. Yeah, you huh? got to hear it. We send back the Arizona Supreme Court in time to pass an abortion law before OJ is born. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my and God. there's complications in childbirth and we're, I don't know, oh, in any fuck. case. Oh, yeah, the, here I go, mixing stories. In yeah, any case, you're mixing. Well, I mean, I talk about mixing stories. Of, here's some oh. mixed company here. Um, you got to send me that image. That image well, is perfect. One of these guys is dead. Um, the other one, unfortunately, is uh, alive and kicking. So one of these guys is the worst fucking criminal in the history of the United States, and the other one's dead. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> I, 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 so you want that image? I'm oh, sure I'll send it to you. Why not? I actually just, really do because I'm gonna I'll probably do a, that an and... OJ video later because oh my god, I mean that's my mid '90s, my wheelhouse. I remember watching the NBA Finals when they cut to that fucking chase and i was like oh come on well uh, let me ask you about that because um i am old enough to know who oj simpson is and i'm old enough to remember the oj simpson trial i grew I, I was young in the 90s but it was all the happening rage like even as a kid i was sitting watching uh the trial about how oj simpson this famous football player had slashed the throat of these people um and so it's a little weird but it, it's something that we had then but you probably are familiar with OJ's from his NFL commentary days. So, like, was there a point? In I am history? actually. I was. Yeah, a, go ahead. I was a kid, but I can't tell you how strange. It'd be. So, you know, um, I, you know, so it was ninety three four when the chase occurred. It was nineteen ninety four. Right. Nineteen ninety four. I was was I twenty two, twenty one. So I mean, yeah, I was old enough for like. I was still youngish, but like I was like, oh, you know, and to me, even like, like he had the fakest persona. He, you know, he was this friendly, affable guy on the sidelines. Everybody loved hell. He was even in the Naked Gun movie and was funny as shit, you know, in that. And and, and I mean, you know, so you, you, there are people you could see, right? Like the way you look today and you're like, oh, Mike Tyson committed rape. That's a shock. You know what I mean? No. I mean, there's people that are nasty, mean people in athletics, but you know, all a lot of this stuff, and I think some of it's because the media was we didn't report stuff back then that they report now. But you, there was just nobody knew. The insiders apparently all knew, but nobody like me knew about his personal life that he had abused his wife before. That yeah, beat the whole shit think, out of her. Yeah, yeah. That I think there are a few times he'd shown up like coked up or drunk to, uh, you know, to his his gig, and they had to send him home. I mean, like I didn't know any of that stuff. Right. So it was such, I think, and I don't think most people did. I could be wrong, but I don't think they did. So it was such a shock when it turned out it was him. Right. right. Like there were just, there were, again, there are a number of other people that had played in, in athletics. You were just like, that guy's such a dick. Right. And, 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 but he just wasn't that, that kind of guy. You know, he, he didn't come off like as a, as a baseball fan, people will say I'm biased because, you know, I'm a Yankees fan, but like, I don't know if you're a baseball fan at all, but, and, he, and almost in your neck of the woods. I got my St. Louis, I got my St. Louis Cardinals head on today, man. That's right. Okay, so this is not your team, but not hugely far from you. A few hours, right? The Kansas City uh, Royals. Royals. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. George Brett, to me, seemed like a pretty serious dick who was always fighting with people on the field and screaming and yelling. Nolan Ryan threw the ball at people's heads. Like, there were people that you were like, that guy, you know, turns out to be an asshole. I think the generation before me, when when uh, when Beanball, as they called him, Beanball Bunning, ended up becoming Senator Bunning from from uh, Kentucky under McConnell's tutelage, and ended up being an absolute fucking asshole. No one was shocked because the dude threw at people's heads. You know, he enjoyed it. 
I'm saying that OJ did not have that image, right? Like his up image until, was up until the Bronco fiasco. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you you, you stab a couple people and run away from the police in a Bronco. That'll fuck your image. Let me ask bit. you. Let me ask you because I again I was. You said you were twenty two. I was I was nine years old, I believe, in nineteen. You little fuck you. Ah, Sorry. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, and that's why I've got gray in the beard and I you got gray. I just sit back from the camera far enough that you can't see the shit. Okay. And here's, I'm here's sit back here. You can't yeah. see shit now. Yeah. You look you're one of them far out guys. The further out you get the the better you look, you know what I mean? A closer up. So a, is that like a Monet? Is that what they call that? <laughs> I think so. so here's here's the thing. Here's what I want to ask. When you first, when when it cut from what you were watching, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, and there's a Bronco moment, right? Were you like, oh, he, there's no way he did it? Were you like that at first, or were you like, what the fuck? He actually, yeah. So I mean, first of all, do you, it was, do you remember the feeling they had. I do. Well, the reason why I remember it was such a big deal is because the Knicks, I was a New Yorker, were in the NBA Finals, and the Knicks didn't have a habit of making the NBA Finals. They usually lost to the Bulls. There's a guy named Michael Jordan there uh, who had beat us before we ever got. So this was a huge deal. Oh, my God, we made the Finals. We're sitting there watching the game, watching with my dad, and they cut away. And so, of course, everybody in New York is pissed as shit, right? Uh, I'm sure people in Houston, too, who were playing. And then... You, and then you see this, and I'm like, yeah, no, I thought, I'm like, that was the first moment where I'm like, holy shit, maybe he did do it. Because up until then, they had shown, like, he'd flown to Chicago the next day, and they said they saw him with a, he had, a, like, a cut on his hand, I vaguely remember, you know, or something like that. I mean, there were little pieces of, like, it could be him, but you still, at that point, would it, to believe, I mean, again, he was larger than life. He was, you know, one of the two or three most famous you know, former football players alive right. easily. Well, you and, know, and and because so, not only was he was he a he's the Heisman Trophy winner, I think, in nineteen sixty eight. Not only that, he was a he was he was a fantastic running back, right? Record setting. Oh back. my god! Yeah, and then he I was mean, a he great was, he was a great broadcaster. OJ Simpson was right, actually because again a really that affable image. He didn't show any of that shit on camera, any of the anger, any of the whatever. He came off. He's always laughing. Everybody loved him. Seemed to well, love him. Well, at the time, Anyhow. at the time, and maybe I'm wrong about this, uh, OJ Simpson was one of the only black dudes that was a really There's good commentator at the, at the time, which, yeah, which of course. It feels like, you know, to me as a white dude, oh, well, that ain't a big deal because I grew up in the 90s. There was a lot of black comment, and there's a lot of black commentators now, but that wasn't the way it was then. That not was the not 80s. the way it was then. That when I was more towards your age, when I was a really little kid, you know, that was what I would call part of I'm now I'm gonna start laughing because I was gonna say, like the Cosby show. Oh wait. Um, oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Bill Cosby <laughs> and OJ Simpson, you ruined everything. You fucked That's why I'm it. the racist that I no, I'm kidding. So, I mean <laughs> like, like, these guys <laughs> please don't cut that and put that in a clip. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely but, not. I would never do that. Yeah, um, you fucker. My career's ruined. <laughs> but, 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 like, I watched those things, and it was true. Like, the Cosby family, O.J. Simpson on the sidelines, there were things that, that you needed to see uh, that normalized that you would see people that didn't look like you doing the things that people who looked like you had been doing and said, okay, yeah, that should well, be normal. And, and on the other side, and on the other side, th there, there are people who never saw people who look like them as a fucking commentator. And here's OJ Simpson. He's yeah. One of the greatest football players of all time. And he's, he, I, and, and I don't know OJ as a broadcaster. The only way that I know that he was a brilliant broadcaster is because I've watched videos of him now and he's still really good at, just talking off the cuff. Yeah, but he, his but presentation. He, but he was, yeah. but but he was really good uh, in that time, in that era for the NFL uh, as a broadcaster, and and that and but I didn't. I was only nine, so I had no fucking clue who OJ Simpson was until right. the Bronco. So I only know him as a murderer. That's it. Like that's the only thing. <laughs> you know, I only so, know I mean, OJ is a guy who used to play sports ball who is now a murderer. Like that's right. the. But that's during the the the. the the course of that Bronco ride that seemed to go on interminably forever. Um, and I would argue, and I will argue, I'm going to do a video about this, changed everything. Changed our media landscape. It changed all sorts of things because uh, of them saying, wait, we can just do that kind of bullshit all the time, right? And that'll get ratings. Um, you know, during the course of that, I think a lot of people changed their minds and were like, because again, here was this wealthy, 
You know, I mean, if he were, if he, the, the everyday racism where it happened, you know, a couple of years earlier on the, you know, in LA uh, on the streets with the riots and Rodney King, like if, if you just, this, he were a regular dude running away, you'd be like, oh, the cop's being racist again. But this was OJ, you know, this is the guy that everybody loved. He was on TV and all of that. So at that point when he was running away, not giving himself and that's when, for me, I started saying, hmm, maybe there's, something, the fuck, to it. Maybe there's something going on here. What the <laughs> fuck, why, why is this guy who lives in like a, what was it, a Brentwood or, you know, one of those neighborhoods, this huge mansion, why is he running away from the cops? Right. And he's not you know, like, like and he's not like running, running away. He's on the highway in a Bronco and you can all and they can there's a helicopter. We can all see it. Like, it's not like he was hiding in the bushes or something. This guy was right out on the freeway. Like he was <laughs> like, I mean, he, so in any case, he, he, you know, it's just it's it's um, it, I mean, it is it is something from like when, when, you know, your younger childhood, but my childhood and really even my younger childhood in the 80s, remembering who he was, you know, where I was like, holy shit. You know, uh, where somebody that quickly went from one thing. I mean, it is funny. I, I accidentally ended up mentioning Bill Cosby because he's one of the few others who I think went from, oh, my God, America's grandpa to holy shit in Jesus. like no time. Holy you know? roofie, Batman. <laughs> right. Jesus. Like, you, we've, I mean, you know, like we're just like, oh, my God, you're that. You well, know, I, I, I mean, actually I got I got some I got a breaking clip here. This is apparently footage of Jeffrey Dahmer um, watching uh, O.J. Simpson as he enters the gates of hell. Here it is. Here is Jeffrey Dahmer um, welcoming um, O.J. Simpson there at the, <laughs> and hell um, as uh, the devil opens up the gates. for OJ They're slapping hands. Yeah, they're excited, <laughs> man. There's, that, that's got to be a hell of a fun fucking place to be. Rush Limbaugh's hanging with him down there. Oh, yeah, he's doing man. the radio, you know. Right, uh, right, right. Maybe, maybe OJ will join him in some of those uh, broadcasts that he's doing. I don't know. Well, this know. is one of the first guys, you know, kind of since Rush Limbaugh, I can think of when they died where I was like, I mean, I don't tend to dance on people's graves. There's a lot of people I don't particularly like. So I don't, I don't believe in being fake. I will never do that RIP bullshit to somebody who – I'm not going to miss, and I think was was not a good person. But then there's an extra level of fucking awful where I'm not going to even hide. You know, he deserved a much worse fate than than he got in the end. Quite frankly, for for the for evil awful person that he was. So uh, some people are asking, was that Tom Brady in that clip? No, I said it was Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, is the um, it looked the like Tom Brady? Well, I mean, Def, Jeffrey Dahmer and Tom Brady might be doppelgangers. I don't know. Maybe they're wingmen, too. Speaking of wingmen. Maybe um, one of them ate the other one. And like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, um, so speaking of wingmen, um, there's actually an interview uh, clip that I saw this morning about O.J. Uh, Simpson talking about uh, the guy that we might talk about here in just a minute. Um you know, again, we see this picture here. There's a guy who's, uh, you know, a career criminal. He's a piece of my shit. God, the evil as, as in that and picture. The other guy's dead, right? But they okay. couldn't they couldn't fit Hitler in there. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> it is, <laughs> you know, it's a crowded party with with uh, O.J. Trump and Epstein. You know, it's, it's and Don, a Dahmer was probably there. Right, I mean, that right, fucking right, thing right. probably rocked. <laughs> oh my God. All right, so here is a clip of of. Um, OJ, the juice, as he's known, uh, describing uh, the fentanyl fuhrer as his wingman. Let, let's listen. Just just around, you know, in New York. I lived in New York doing NFL Live, and we kind of had the same tastes in ladies. <laughs> What, oh God! What, whoa! What? Whoa! Whoa! What? What? Whoa! Whoa! I don't like OJ Simpson. Now knows publicly that that um. That Trump's a rapist when he's saying well, that. Well, he, he know he where was that and, from? And he 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 likes he wants to fuck his daughter, right? Like this is, and I don't know if that's what OJ is talking about. I I'm not really you know sure. when that was from that um, clip. The, I no, I this is just on some fucking white dude podcast. It's not a big deal. Like how, uh, that, that's why I was wondering how much OJ knew about him because. Yeah, I bet they did have the same taste in ladies. And the same taste in I bet they had the same taste in ladies in terms of ladies having the ability to say no to right. them. I'm I'm sure I'm sure so. But listen to how he described he goes a little further here uh, in describing it. <laughs> and, what was uh, that taste at the time? Oh 
<laughs> what was that taste at the time? I don't know if this is like Jeffrey Dahmer type talk either. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Like, like, what was well, it? I like to chew on her arm a little bit. You know, that was nice. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like, I'm not sure I want to know. Time? Yeah. We're talking about, okay, so this is NFL Live, right? So he was on NFL Live probably is the 1980s, correct? So I, yeah. I don't know when he lost his NFL contract. Um, maybe it was b- because of reasons that, you know, most people now know, but they didn't know at the time, like you were saying. Um, but, and this is in the eighties. So this was when Trump was, you know, in his forties. Am I wrong about that? Right. Thirties. Uh, nope. That's right. That's about right. Yeah. Depending on when the eighties, but yeah, basically forties, so late thirties into forties, I think. Right? right. This is right before the, he, you know, he bankrupt two casinos, which is an impossibility, but he did it, you know, and congratulations. I still, to I still you know, it's not possible. Out of everything he's accomplished in his life. And by that, like all the unbelievable fucked up shit, all the, unbelievable stupid shit all the unbelievable lies and the treason and the this and the that i still find that to be the most impressive <laughs> that, a, is, hey, that is pretty good like people, like you're talking about the you there when people look at you and say you can't do that and he's and he's like no i can bankrupt two because i can make two, so, so two of them people are you come serious? to you people come to you who have nothing else to do or right. perhaps addicted they have like 10 hours to sit down and your oxygen pumped, no window, no clocks in the walls, everything they can do to disorient you and keep you there, f- ply you with drinks and get you to fucking hand over your money, which is actually what you're doing, handing over your money for no product in the end. Right. And Just shiny lights, place, shiny lights. <laughs> the house always wins unless Donald Trump owns the fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh it's, it's, like, it's incredible. It's like how... It's incredible. How do you do that shit? Well, so we're talking about this time period, right? So this is probably about the time that you would see Jeffrey Epstein come on the scene with some of these people and start, you know, rubbing elbows with them. It, we see the probably. famous. I don't know his history as well. When did he? When did he kind of? When it, was he a scumbag? I think Jeffrey Epstein. No, he's always been a scumbag. scumbag. When did he right. arrive on the? You know, well, the jet and that's set that's, scene. That, that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to get at here is that possibly um, when OJ Simpson is saying this, he's not really thinking about timelines that much, right? I mean, he's not really good about thinking before he does things. I don't think, right? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? No, no, sorry. He, he seems like more he, of a react and then right, think about so, it afterwards kind right. of guy. Well, I mean, we know we know uh, of the uh, O.J. Simpson murder trials, but he actually went to prison for he went to someone's hotel room and tried to beat the shit out of him because well, they he broke in and tried to. He claimed that they had some of his. I think right. they had legally purchased. Right. They legally purchased stuff that he, I think, put on the market because he had no fucking money because he spent it all on his legal team and had to go to debt. And so he, I think he went to break it and steal his shit back. And he probably was, I don't know for a fact, I don't remember, but I seem to remember reading it. Like, I think he probably was coked up and all that shit. Like, he always, it seems, we didn't know this, but when he was going on air was plenty of the time. And, uh, you know, O.J. Simpson was a big motherfucker. So he beat the shit out of some people and he spent (laughs) a solid chunk of years in prison. Right. And, and 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 he doesn't, he doesn't think about timelines and things very very thoroughly before he just acts on them. So I think that's kind of what he's doing. I love doing. everything you're saying. He doesn't think about just that he's a dumb fuck. Like, you know, he's like, <laughs> he doesn't really think I mean, about no, time. Listen, listen. He sometimes- doesn't think in the conventional sense where it's somebody thinks, you know, you're just <laughs> right. like, he's, he's a fucking he's, idiot. He's, what he's a dumbass. He's a dumbass. Okay. He could, you know, at least unlike Donald Trump, he had a talent. He could run the fuck out of a ball. Right, um, right. Donald Trump was every bit as stupid, but didn't even have that talent. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I told the audience this in the A block. Look, I'm I'm dumb at times. Sometimes I'm very stupid, but I'm not an idiot. I'm not an idiot. Oh. right. Like I have moments where I honestly question whether my, my my faculties are still there. I say or do such stupid shit, and I just always hope I don't do them publicly, like on a show, which I'm sure I have. Oh, but well, um, you know, but, well, but but these are people that consistently have misfiring neurons coming out of their ears and their fucking nose and their you know, like they're not they 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 their brains their wherevers don't. coming out of their wherevers is it or your or her wherever <laughs> right or where well let's let's see what OJ says about the whatevers let's let's see what he says here well, well, hey come on <laughs> <laughs> models for, for models models because yeah yeah he knew uh, you know. Eileen Ford, I knew Eileen Ford. Uh, we found ourselves at a lot of those type 
of events. So you and Trump Thanks. are like kind of like wingmen sometimes. Well, I, I would say we were just just around. I say we were. I say we were wingmen and and models. Are you the only one surprised models. there that he didn't use the term bitches? Because I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like Donald Trump would say that, I would expect him to say it that way. They're the same type of men. Yeah, I had my bitches. You know, right. like I was right. expecting that, but. Well, hey, it is a thing. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah again. Um, but I, I want to, you know, speaking of O.J. Simpson and Donald Trump, this is another good video. This is another good little clip uh, where the Trump universe and the Juice universe uh, cross and meet and collide. And it's just a fucking shit show. Here is the Juice, um, you know, postulating on Donald Trump's criminal woes and trying to give him some advice, I think. Let's listen. One thing they all <laughs> told me and stressed to me, do not talk about the case publicly. Do not do interviews. Don't talk about it publicly. Well, so I mean, you know what I, this I'm not gonna Go I'm ahead. not gonna lie. That's pretty good advice that uh, the juice is giving Donald Trump. He should shut the fuck up if he doesn't want to go to jail for a long time. But I don't want him to shut up. I don't want Trump. Well, I don't either. But what I, what's amazing to me there is we've been making fun of how stupid OG Simpson is and he or was and he was, and yet even he knew to <laughs> shut the fuck up. Even he had the self-control, a guy who couldn't stop himself from stabbing his wife and his wife's lover to death and running away with blood on him. All right. That guy had the self-control to not talk about the case publicly. But but diaper pants fucking McGee there, you know, a little old grandpa can't shut the fuck up and goes and, and gets himself in further legal trouble. And, and you know. If we had anything tantamount to a functioning legal system, which, you know, again, do we, do we not? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not getting into the timelines of stuff. Uh, you know, I don't want to start a, a you, you uh, ripping into Glenn Kirshner war here. I'm just saying, oh. as far as I'm concerned, got, you know, just, let me finish my, my quick point and then you jump in, which is I, I've gotten to a point now that I have zero faith that any legal entity is ever going to hold them accountable. So um, we'll see what happens. Why? <laughs> yeah, I, that's yeah, a good I got, I got my. Uh, you just smart got smarter glasses. because you put. Your, you're like Lauren Bobert. You get smarter these, when you put your glasses on. These are my lawyer. I'm not actually a lawyer, but these, job, these glasses make me um, sort of a lawyer because it makes me. Okay. And I look, I look over top of them at all of our friends here. See, listen, friends. You know what really grinds my gears? So let's talk about Trump and these criminal cases for just a second. Yeah, you let's. You know, OJ is fun, but I suppose we do generally talk about politics and. Uh, the OJ well, thing I is wanted to mix is, OJ into Trump adjacent. and then Trump. Well, yeah. Right, because he, he and I promise you, behind the scenes, whatever, he was MAGA. I mean, again, the thing I keep, I've pointed out again and again about MAGA is that it's not based on political positions. It's based on emotional disposition. If you're a narcissist, if you're a fucking raging, you know, like, like domestic violence abuser, if you are a serial killer, if you are any of those lists of, of personality disorders that they release in the DSM books they release every year, you're attracted to MAGA. They all can spot each other. Again, it's like if you watch Last of Us, the way the guys who have the vines growing in their fucking bodies know who the other ones are. Because they, they still like, wait, there's somebody else who lacks a soul like me. And then they, you know, they pull them in. So it doesn't matter what your political positions are. It's, it's that you're just an evil person. So I'm sure OJ was mad. Well, I'm giving you a live shot here of these sorts of people. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fuck you, fuck Biden, fuck Biden. Trump, Trump, Trump. Is this Biden driving by them? No, this is this is at Mar-a-Lago. Can you imagine? Uh, now, I, I I don't know. Have you ever been down where Mar-a-Lago is at, or close by? I have actually. Um, yeah. Not in a long time. Not since he ran for office or. I mean, even well before that, I think once or twice describe when I was younger. It, describe it for the audience. Describe what, how do you get there? I, I mean, and, and it's, so it's in Palm Beach. Right. And I'll describe anything I can remember, right? It's been a long time. But I, my family here and there used to go to Palm Beach. I went down once with or twice with them. Um, you have to drive. Across you know, there's a bridge. The, yes. There's the wealthy section. That, of course, is where the Kennedys <laughs> have their compound, too. Um, I'm sure a lot of good stuff went on there with women also. Um, and, oh and you know, this were all these all these people who have these multi-gazillion dollar homes, you know, these mansions are. 
And yet his, what I can tell you is you have to drive, you have to go down, I think, if I remember, some sort of a private road. But again, it's been a long time. But what I can tell you is the, the thing that stuck with me, even from, from back then, you know, we're talking 20 years ago at least, uh, is that how gauche it was. Like, it's just, it's like, you know, the way he's got a golden shitter in, in like, you know, his Trump Tower place. It's just this gaudy, gro you know, gross. It's like all the women that show up there and have like, size triple z boobs you know like sticking out well, no like, i think it's actually a prerequisite you gotta have a fake pair of tits to right, get into marlon right, right but not even fake ones that are like and even like within the realm of normal looking like the ones that stick out to here oh yeah we don't want to discriminate against people who have decent tit de decent fake tits if you're, you're put it this way if you're you have, you have to be, unless you're famous you have to be white because it's donald trump and he's a racist right. mm -hmm. and if you're white and you don't look like you could have gone on a Jerry Springer show, you're not allowed in Mar-a-Lago. Right, that's much. why all these people are standing outside Mar-a-Lago. Because these yeah. people, his supporters, the one that send him $5, the last $5 they have each month, um, the reason why they're standing outside is because... They are the people who look like they're on Jerry Springer. They're the people who you described, you know, the well, so there's the, the yeah, the, and then the audience comes in, you know, and, and and that's more, frankly, people who gawk at the those folks who are more like your folks that are probably at Mar-a-Lago, right? Who have more money, who paid to be at the show because it's like, I want to come here and look at really trashy people. Um, but I mean, again, I don't know, it's hard to differentiate. It's sort of the trashy people with money. Are in Mar-a-Lago. The trashy people without money are the ones standing outside. That's the difference. Is the people outside there? There's no difference. They all have no class, no dignity. You know, nothing. It's just the ones in Mar-a-Lago can spring for the fake tits and the the ball rays and the you know all the other shit these guys get. Right. You know, like that's the difference. Well, let's let's talk about maybe um, this trial on Monday because it's apparently the jury selection is supposed to happen on Monday. Now, if you listen to the great legal analyst, he's going to be in jail by Monday afternoon. Um, but that's not the truth. That's just not even close to being true. And I actually think that there's a Hail Mary here for a panel of judges on Monday that are going to hear his appeal. I actually think they're going to give it to him, Cliff. I think they're going to give him uh, a get out of jail free card again. That That's just my thought. I, and a lot of you people. Know what? Like I do too, because here. they always do. They're like Again, I'm, my default position are, is one thing that hopefully people will see as a positive and one thing that people will see as a negative. On the positive side, my default position is unless Vladimir Putin pulls off something well beyond what he did in the past or something else crazy, because crazy things can happen between now and I don't know if the asteroid barely misses Earth and Donald Trump somehow claims credit for it. Uh, unless something nuts happens, Trump's going to get his ass handed to him. All these elections, all these numbers, everything keeps telling the same story that in, I mean, in Arizona, basically they just, the Arizona Supreme Court just said, Hi, we'd like Donald Trump to not win and also carry Lake too. By by passing that, <laughs> that ban, and there's going oh, to be now like slavery because we love 1864. Right. You know, because everything that was done in 1864, you definitely want to base society on that. Right. Um, you know, like <laughs> that was back in a like time the when they're bar. like that's the bare minimum, you know what I mean? That was back when they're like, You have a fever, let's cut you open and give you a good bleeding, you know. <laughs> that was their that was medicine back then. Um, make America so, 1864 again, baby. Exactly. So, so you, you know, the way I see this is uh, not only, and again, everybody here, do not let up. Every social media post, every door you knock on, every call you make, every couple of dollars you give, everything you do matters. So don't, please don't, but if everybody does their parts, everybody acts in the manner in which we have in all these special elections in 22 and 23 in Virginia, you know, and, and whatever, in Kentucky with the governor's race, I think it's, I think we're going to kick his ass in all the swing states. I think I'm not just saying this because I live here. I think Ohio, I, I think Florida with a, an abortion measure on the ballot. I think Texas and Iowa and a few others are going to be back in play, maybe even Missouri. Uh, I think we're going to kick his ass politically. On the other hand, that's the po my positive news. My negative news is I don't, I, I just, I've lost all faith in our legal system. I've lost all faith. That, the judges to me all seem to be Merrick Garland rolled into different people. None of them have any fucking balls. None of them will stand up to this guy. None of them will hold him to the same standards they would hold me to or anybody else. And I just, I don't, you know, they're going to let him in all of these trials get away with on the stand or not all, or even when he's just sitting as a, you know, not on the stand, scream and yell and taint the jury pool and do whatever the fuck he wants to do. And I just, I don't, I don't believe, you know, or, or, or they're just going to 
themselves, even lacking a jury in, in judge trials, fucking let him bias them with the stuff that he puts out there. I just, I have no faith in our legal system. Anymore. I have a little I different say view it, of it. I, I have not. a little different view of it. My view of it is, is this is how the legal system works because it is a two tier justice system, and he is in that upper tier and he always has been and he's continuing to be and it's just how it operates this is just how it operates for rich white people but i do believe he is terrified um and jessica oh, pointed I, out I, here, I, I believe that it's it's not i'm glad i mean you know he's wearing the diaper for a reason right <laughs> but i just i don't i i just the, the, what i'm going to do for my sanity is be pleasantly surprised when any motherfucking court anywhere actually holds him to account that's what we all should do i think makes i think him, you're on to something him there spend one minute in a prison that is the moment i will be shocked in a pleasant way but i my default setting is he's never seen the inside of a jail cell i i, I think that's a good point to make that we should be just pleasantly surprised because um, something happened and that we weren't expecting. Because if your expectation is what some of the legal scholars say, you're going to get discouraged. And Cliff, as <laughs> I say on the show all the time, shit, I forgot my glasses. Or I would have discouragement. Yeah, well, discouragement. Here, I have, I have hairspray. Hold on. You, 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 Do I look more legal now? Oh, it, 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 totally. Legal beagle. Legal beagle. Okay. Um, but, but discouragement breeds disengagement, and we don't need to be disengaged. What we need to be is uh, in tune to that Donald Trump is terrified, and we need to keep him terrified. Here's Jessica on Fox News telling us how he's terrified, and they push back on her hard with lies. Watch. To say that Joe Biden is the threat to democracy, considering what Donald Trump and his band of lawyers tried to pull off in 2020 is complete insanity. I mean, he dispatched lawyers all over the country to overturn a free and fair- Some election. of whom have been disbarred. A lot of them have pled out to doing this. A lot of them are still to face trial. And he's doing his darndest to make sure that he doesn't have to show up in any of these courtrooms because he's definitely afraid of what's going to happen there. And as many of these January 6th He's not participant afraid of anything. All big man, not afraid, whatever. I know him. Okay, yeah. I'm sure you, you do know him, and I don't know him, but I don't think that that man who doesn't want to even sleep in a hotel bed wants to go to jail. So don't refute <laughs> what happened. You know that Sidney Powell. We He's know so much happened. better than all of them what? combined. What? Why does do, why does Fox News still have her on? Like why I don't do know. they? I don't. I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know what Jessica is doing over there to make sure that she stays. No, on but, there, thank, but whatever you she's know doing, what? Good doing. for her. Yes. good for her. Even if, if it's Fuck just yes. because. Here's the deal, right? When I lived on the East Coast, uh, the first show I ever went on was a Fox show um, with somebody with the exact makeup and look of you know Judge Box of Wine there, whatever the fuck her name is, Piro. Um, and I, I went on, I must've gone on a combination of Fox and friends. I mean, I think I've told you before, I got banned by Hannity who called me an asshole during the closing credits, still on the old Hannity and Combs show, still one of my proudest moments, uh, got into it with O'Reilly once, I think it was on his radio show. I used to go on those things because to me it was fun. It was a challenge. And that's why I ended up accepting their offer at Sinclair when they paid me to be the liberal analyst. Cause I'm like, fuck you guys. I don't want to just take on one of you, bring your whole, bring them all. You, the host, you, because I can take you all because you're dumb fucks. You're not even a fucking challenge. And I'm not trying to brag because clearly Jessica Tarlov can do it too. And I'm sure you can do it and many others. They're just not smart people. Like you can sit there and tear them apart. And I love the way. So to me, how she does that every day and stays sane. I mean, I'm sure it's a big paycheck helps, but how she stays sane, I don't know. But she's doing the service and the service is... Is she convincing anybody? Most people watching Fox are brain dead. She might convince a few people around the around the edges, sure. But the mostly what she's doing is Donald Trump is glued to Fox News, yes. you know, like he is a Russian porn star who has KFC on her boobs. Okay. So <laughs> he is he is so he is so glued to it. He watches every goddamn minute of it. So when, every time she does that, kind of like the way he's scared about prison and why these cases are so great to, that, that are being pursued right now is I've so long tried to explain as part of my Democrats get tougher, part of my stay on offense, part of my whatever is so much of politics is psychological warfare. And Donald Trump is so psychologically weak. And if you have her there and other people who he used to trust and rely on ripping the shit out of him, people he once considered to be friends and allies, I don't care if it's Scaramucci or it's Michael Cohn or it's, I don't have to love them. 
I know that, that in his insecure, addled, fucked mind, it enrages him and it knocks him off his game. Not that he has any good game to begin with, but it leads him to make more mistakes and do dumber shit. So Jessica Tarlov is actually providing a service there. If what, you're asking yeah. why she's on. Let me let me show you um, what she does here because it's brilliant. Jess, Jessica is brilliant. She's absolutely fucking brilliant. She really is. I mean, I, I wasn't brilliant. trying to take anything away from her. It was more to say, if you're good at this stuff, do it. You're really good at this stuff too. All right, Tony, and you you'd be able to do it too if you're good at this stuff. The Fox News people, it, I mean, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. It's fun. I hope she has fun doing it. Because oh, she, such she does. Well, you know, you know why she has fun doing it? Because she knows Trump is listening. And she knows Trump that, is yes. listening because Trump tunes into this show just to fucking get rage porn from her. Of course. He fucking hates her. I would you go on. I would only advise her. her. And she follows me on Twitter. So maybe I'll send her a DM or something. The only thing I advise yeah, her, yeah. but we may have too much class for this. See, I, I don't. Uh, is to throw <laughs> out a little either, reference. Either. <laughs> yeah, throw out a little reference to his weight. Throw out a little reference to how much he smells. Like just well, a little. Well, listen, little... listen to what she does here. If you read, okay. if you, well, I'm going to rack it back. Listen to what she does because she knows he's listening when she says this. Listen to this real quick. And as many of these January six participants, of anything. Oh, big man, not January six hostages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, big man, not afraid, whatever. That's like, such you, a great you fucking dismissiveness. Pussy. <laughs> you I mean, fucking pussy. <laughs> you know what's great? Is that she managed to dismiss both fucking drunky to the left of her or to the right of her <laughs> right. there and Trump all in the same sentence. Right. Because she managed to mock both of them. Right. Love well, it. and 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 it's the perfect way to combat this stuff. And even if the average Fox viewer doesn't have enough brain cells to create in manufacture thoughts and realize that what Jessica, well, well, I mean, what do you want me to do? Um, I'm just telling the truth. Uh, well, but just if, if not to understand that Jessica here is, is just, just dropping a little bit of truth on these people. And the, yeah. as soon as, as soon as she says, cause listen there, I've been locked up and there is nothing more fucking weird about, um, something than your freedom being taken away right and and being behind a a, a fucking fence with razor wire it's fucking weird it's fucking weird and when you have i uh, i just spent a one night in a drunk tank for being i think i've told you this story for being in a passenger seat sober but having a new york license when they stopped the kentucky troopers stopped they our car in a drunk just, tank I, I, I was drunk in a so passenger were, seat i wasn't you were driving sober in a drunk tank <laughs> No, no, I was drunk, but oh, I wasn't okay. driving. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't okay. driving. They used it's kind of like the laws, the sundown law, the things they would use to arrest black people throughout the South forever for doing nothing. They have some old law in the book called alcoholic intoxication, which means they can arrest anybody in the entire state, right? As so long they as just they've been drinking. Right. So like, ah, Schechter, New York, sounds suspiciously Jewish. Let's take him to the drunk tank. <laughs> and, uh, and luckily I had some contacts, and they admitted that the next day to – the FOP, top FOP lawyer was an advisor to the campaign I was on. He went and found the, 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 the guy that arrested me who admitted he had a quota to fill. And he didn't like the fact that I was from New York. And uh, they, they got rid of my fine. They cleaned my, my file and all that. But all I'm saying is, and I'm not claiming this is some makes me tough or something. It was just one night. But yeah, one, eight, eight hours of people putting you behind bars and putting you in a place where you lose your freedom is almost even enough to make you be like, Fuck. right. It's not, it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant for any reason. And there are, there are really good reasons to go to jail. And there are really stupid reasons to go to jail. Yeah. Prison. Like there's really good reasons. Like there's a lot of good trouble that happened. Martin Luther King Jr. John Lewis, uh, several other activists have been arrested and went to jail for damn good reasons and probably worth it. Not just to them, but to our country. Probably, you know, them on a personal level probably wasn't worth it at all. They were sac sacrificing themselves. Right, exactly. It was the greater good of all of us, you know, of our, of, of particularly of African Americans and, and other minority groups to, to not have to suffer at the hands of these douchebags. So, I mean, and of course, don't think for a second I'm saying that that's over with. You know, obviously we've taken, we took a lot of steps forward and now with, with, uh, 
you know, piss cotton candy hair there. We've taken a few steps backwards again. So, well, but Jessica points out a good thing, a big, tough man, you know, because no one wants to go to jail. No one wants to go to prison. This is not a thing that they want to do. And she does a perfect, it's perfect the way that she mocks him. Now I want to get to what we're going to do to mock, uh, MAGA who wants to make America 1864 again real quick before, cause I know you, I know you've got a little bit of time left here. Maybe you got, I'm going to stay to one thirty. So unless you want to kick me right, off, so we, before got, then. we got 15 minutes. So let's talk about this 1864 shit. Now I understand that, uh, you know, Republicans are very upset that they've caused a situation where Democrats are like, Oh, 1864, huh? Well, hold my fucking beer. We're going to beat you in this election. And they take that as that Democrats and liberals and people who are, I don't know, just want women to have the same rights as the old dudes trying to take away their fucking rights. Right. You know what I mean? Like to healthcare and, you know, yeah. privacy in their doctor's office, that sort of shit, that, that bodily autonomy that most white men have, um, you know, all white men that, that, you know, those are the things they want. But here's the thing is that we're not really excited that you have taken away women's rights. I would have much rather Roe v. Wade stayed in place. I would much rather us elect politicians that were reasonable, that would put us in a situation where we could ratify the ERA because um, it could be ratified um, if we just change. Where are we like right one now. state away? But I think they're going to try to use like some time limit thing to not it's allow a, us to a do time, it. It's a time limit thing because there was a time limit on the ratification. But that but doesn't exist it. in the Constitution, so that may be right. unconstitutional. We, and a good Supreme Court would look at that and say that's bullshit. Right. But, so, but but we are in the timeline of not that. So right. we, we as liberals and we as people who, you know, value our democracy. Um, and people I, who do have brain cells that real, coordinate. Uh, yeah, they do yeah. manufacture thoughts. Um, you know, and logic and reason, you know, when you rub them together, it's kind of a, all that shit that, you know, that you saw starting to appear in clan of the cave bear. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> when they were like making the scratches on the rocks, but here's the yeah. thing, here's the thing, here's the thing is that, um, your MAGA's gift to us of 1864 isn't what they think it is. They're like, oh my God, now they're going to beat us in the election because we went too far. no, we know that you want to go further. That yeah. This is the reason why we are so fucking adamant about this. And we are so pissed off about this. And we are going to use any fucking means legally necessarily, especially at the ballot box, to fucking, uh, to fucking give you exactly what you deserve, which is an 1864 style fuck you. OK, yeah. that is exactly what we and, and we are excited, not about the fact that you're stripping away people's rights so we can battle against you. We are excited that now the entire country knows who the fuck you are. Right. Because we've been no, yelling and no. screaming it for for decades, decades. People have been saying that these I mean, George Carlin just played a, t a clip yesterday. Of George Carlin, George Carlin, 1992 was I saying used to play that clip all the time. Pro, they're anti woman. They're anti woman. And. Yeah. And that's the thing is it has nothing to do with the procedure, it has nothing to do with the fetus, it has nothing to do with the baby. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. What it has to do I with mean, is if there were an actual baby that we were talking about, sure. Uh sorry, zygote and fetus, no. Um here's look, here here's the thing. Here's what I like to point out. Okay, and, and I'm I'm gonna actually for like I'm not gonna make a joke about this, I'm gonna be serious, right? Women will, there will be some women likely who will now die because of what the Arizona Supreme Court just did. It's horrific. And there were women who died because of, uh, I'm sure numerous ones have. I've seen reports certainly on massive injuries to women. The Biden campaign released that ad about a woman who may now never be able to have a baby again because she had a miscarriage and they would not treat her. Which state was it? One of these fucking ridiculous states um, because they said it was tantamount to an abortion. So I would wish that on nobody, okay? But if it's going to happen, and it is, because if there are going to be fascist thugs who want to run our country, and there are, it is better that it happens now because people need to know before they go and vote who the fuck it is we're dealing with. And so I don't celebrate what happened in, in, there any more than I celebrate the Dobbs decision, any more than I celebrate school shootings or celebrate fucking climate disasters or anything else. I just want all this shit that we're going to have to go through and had to go through as a country to go through 
in, in a way that it happens before people have the chance to go and say, huh, who is it that I would rather have represent me in a democracy? Who is it that I would, or even being a democracy, who is it that I'd rather have protecting my children and making sure, caring most about the fact that they come home safely from school, that I get the safe health care that I need, that everybody, by the way, gets health care when they need it, and on and on and on. And for too long, Republicans have been able to, to, to sort of hide those you know sharp edges, and it's taken us, the Democratic Party, having like a charismatic genius, you know, like an Obama or a Clinton, one of the, like two of the best speakers of the last 75 years, to win the presidency and because they've been able to hide this stuff with the complicity of our media. And finally, 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 because the courts they fucking appointed are coming to the decisions that they would naturally come to that represent anywhere from 10 to 25% in most of our society, they're going to get, we're, we are going to motivate people and we're going to kick their fucking asses out of office. And again, I don't celebrate it for a second. I, I wish that people Got it. I wish people could sit there as, as was intended, you know, when our constitution was written. And obviously there were a lot of problems. I'm not saying everything was perfect. Okay. Obviously racial understanding and other stuff were still fucking dark ages, but the basic premise of, of a post enlightenment society where you'd weigh your options and pick the better one. I wish that that was the world we lived in. It's not. So people need to be reminded of what's on the other side. And I'm glad that it has happened now. So they have the time to think about it and think, do I want my children growing up in this shit? Do I want my parents, you know, aging in this shit? Do I want to have to live without health care because I switched jobs? Do I want, you know, all, all this kind of stuff? Well, I said so. it yesterday. I said, I, do I want my daughter to be a piece of property? I don't fucking think so. The Arizona Supreme Court. not going to happen. Now, speaking of Arizona and the Supreme Court, this guy lives in Arizona, Okay. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Charles here, this fucking Nazi scum. I usually I, I can't recognize him there because usually I see like mostly like 80 percent of the faces gums and then there's just eyes right above them. Yeah, well, so. um, you know, I, I keep telling Charles here that he needs to go to hair for men. Um, the I widow's a, peak there is beautiful. Yeah, well, I I usually wear hats, but I have a full nice. Uh, I got the nice hair, okay, uh, and I'm pretty good fucking. Yeah, looking. I mean, hey, I'm pretty good I, looking. I, I, I've hit fifty, and I got most of my hair. Right, I'm pretty happy with that. Right, I, I'm I'm pretty. I'm not bragging or patting myself on the back or anything, but I'm pretty fucking good looking. This yeah, guy is I got ugly lucky on that one. And it, I, mean, I will point out that I'm not an ugly motherfucker like him. So I right. mean, you know, there's that. But Charles, dude, you need to go have some work done. Um, because, and, and you know what you can do, Charles, just go down to Mar-a-Lago. There's plenty of people who have referrals for their shitty plastic surgeons and you can get some of this stuff fixed up, but here's Charles Kirk. Uh, Charlie here is a big Carrie Lake fan. I don't know if you know this, but Carrie Lake, she, she lost the governor's race. <laughs> Bad I do know that. Yeah, I didn't know that Charlie she Kirk lose, was a big she fan, won, but I could have yeah, guessed. Oh, a huge fan. He's, he lives in Arizona. He worked so hard, tried to get her elected and still fucking failed. And they failed time, time, time again in the courts to, to get her to win. Now, yeah, I um, mean, she basically did in Arizona, the same thing that, that Trump did on the national level. I mean, the head of the Maricopa, I did a video on this way back, Maricopa County, Board of Elections, by the way, a lifelong Republican, had to go into hiding with his family because she made all these allegations and he spoke out and was one of the Republicans who actually told the truth, said, no, there were no, there, there weren't You're irregularities. She lost. And so she made up all this shit about him and he literally had to go into protective custody, into hiding with his family. That's who Carrie Lake is. Well, and Carrie Lake is also the person, um, not only supported by Charlie Kirk here, but who said the 1864 law is exactly what she wanted, even though now that she sees it as a political anchor. Yeah, she's um, running away from she's it. Running away from it. But we're going to tie the anchor to her. We're also going to tie it to Charlie and we're going to tie it to Trump here. And if they think we're excited about this, we're only excited because we get to mock them. That's it. Uh, so go ahead, Charles. And just say what them. you're going to say and then we'll and then we'll fucking mock you. The Arizona Supreme Court made the right decision. It's just as simple as it is. I want to. I want to make eventually build a movement where abortion is unthinkable. Uh, that shit. Hang on. Hang on. The Arizona Supreme. I want to. I want to make eventually build a movement where abortion is unthinkable, and it doesn't happen to the country. It happens in Arizona, and I see a population that doesn't want that and doesn't fit. And so while. 
It might be, okay, yeah, you get 90 days or 100 days of this. By the way, they're not even forcing it. So the abortion clinics are remaining open. They're just ignoring the law. You might say, oh, this is one of They're just going to ignore the law. And it very well could result in, in November where the Democrats win everything. They might win everything. He's terrifying. You hear that, Glenn? They may win everything. Yep. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What Charlie Kirk is saying is that he doesn't want women to be citizens. He doesn't want them to have human rights. Um, Correct. He, because to say that you don't want any abortions ever is to kill women. Because abortion isn't isn't always just about the fetus. That's right. The woman we were talking about in the in in the Biden ad, and there's again, I've done a lot of work. I was on the board here in Ohio and proud of it of Planned Parenthood. Um, I've done a lot of work on this issue for NARAL for Planned Parenthood, uh, and, and I mean the horrific stories you learn. First of all, it doesn't really matter because every woman has the right to control their body. End of sentence. Period. Fuck Republicans. But but the second part of this is the simple fact that. Um, to act like you could ever get rid of all, all abortions. There's a, a couple percent of these are the, every one of the ones. And they're, it's like, I mean, some 1% less than that of late term abortions. Every single fucking one happens because somebody, something terrible happens and a woman is going to die or suffer grievous health injury if it doesn't happen. So you're not going to stop those. And you're not going to, so, I mean, he's a child is what he is. He's always been a child. He's a little fucking incel. He probably doesn't even know how you have a child because, you know, he's still waiting for yeah, well, that, he that can't first get his lucky... wife's pussy wet. I know, I know, I know it's Ben Shapiro that said that he didn't, or his wife told him that her pussy doesn't get wet because of him. But I think Charles is probably Dude, on the same level. Anybody can say they have a wife. Okay. That doesn't mean there's anything. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Josh Hawley claims to have a wife. She's a, that's what I'm saying. And, you know what? There's a half dozen Republicans. Larry Craig said he had a wife. And uh, then they found him. Uncle Tom Scott is saying he's going to get, he's gonna get in a the, wife. In, in the Minneapolis airport bathroom. I mean, you know, like the other guy from Virginia, Schrock, whatever, the guy who, who co sponsored, you know, the marriage amendment, he said he had a, had, had a wife. And then they caught him on a gay porn line. Talking dirty to me. I mean, it's the same story with every one of these guys. They all, I mean, Mr. What's his name? Bernie Moreno here in Ohio. He has a wife. He also wife. has an account. He also has an account on a, on a porn, uh, on an online fucking porn dating service where he wanted to meet quote young boys. I mean, I mean, having a wife doesn't really necessarily mean what it's supposed to mean. So Charlie right. Kirk may have a wife, <laughs> but uh, but but uh, I don't I don't think there's much going on there when the lights are turned out. Well, I'm going to tell you that I'm glad that uh, the Democratic Party is now uh, gloves off with mockery and fuckery and that they're like, you know what? Uh, some of this stuff that we're saying may seem offensive, but now we're in a position where they have not given us any other choice. But I will tell you that um, what I'm actually impressed by, and I don't do a lot of bragging about Joe Biden, but you brought up this new ad real quick before you go. I want to show it to you and I want to show the audience. Um I, I want to do a quick bragging about um, Joe Biden and the team, the, the campaign, because I don't brag about Biden a lot because I don't actually think I have to. He does a pretty good job at just doing his fucking job. So that that kind of speaks for itself. Like, just do what you're doing, Uncle Joe and uh, Uncle Joe. That work will take care of itself. But what they are doing, the campaign is is participating in is the war room type response. Yes. Um, and it's rapid and it's highly rapid. And it has a lot of the fuckery and mockery that we like so much, not quite the intensity that we give because they That's are okay. the presidential campaign. It has enough of it. To, they are, they are but it also has enough of it to get in Trump's head and his people's heads. And that's what matters. Right. And here's that ad that they cut. It's a 30 second ad that they cut right after the Supreme Court made the decision. Go for it. Dark Brandon. Because of Donald Trump, millions of women lost the fundamental freedom to control their own bodies. And now women's lives are in danger because of that. The question is, if Donald Trump gets back in power, what freedom will you lose next? Your body and your decisions belong to you, not the government, not Donald Trump. I will fight like hell to get your freedom back. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. I still think at the end he needs to say, I'm Dark Brandon, and I approve this message. I but just but I do love how they show Trump on, like, the crappy TV with the, like, the, you know, the, <laughs> right. like you know that's almost, almost like he's a creature of the 80s, you know. He's like the guy where you had the antenna on the TV, and you had to fix it back when I was a kid. 
it may be too early for you, uh, my friend. But uh, well, there yeah. was a time where we had the bunny ears antennas. I was probably about five or seven years old. But, you know, you had to adjust that shit or you got like the lines and the stuff that uh, you had on that TV. So. Well, they're so good at it. Let me show you a quick response from your best friend, Sean Hannity here. Oh, Let me hey. Show you the response from Sean Hannity on Fox News. It's not very long. Let's listen to the response. And then I'll let you uh, pimp, pimp what you got to pimp to the audience. Here we go. So, yes. For example, I have a few of them. Biden recently tweeted, quote, Trump doesn't trust women. And that he, quote, despises Latinos and that he's trying to rip away health care from Americans and kill millions of Americans. You know what? I want to thank Sean Hannity for getting Dark Brandon's message out there to all the fans. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Dumb asshole. Like, like, what that's is he great. doing? That's well, that's like when he lists Trump's all his crimes. It's like a scrolling thing. Look how, how much of a criminal this guy is. I know, just go for it, Sean. You can, I mean, yeah. if you'd like to, share it all for us, baby. Well, I didn't know if you're still friends with him. If, if you are, you could well, send him I, a I assume when somebody bans me from their show and calls me an asshole, it oh, seems okay. to be it, not something where they love me. Off. Okay. Well, but, you know, he may... It may just be a back and forth, you know, like Charlie Kirk and his wife. Maybe he was right. just angry at me that particular day, and maybe we can do some cuddling, you, you know, and re rekindle this uh, relationship. This, yeah, um, the you know. the love affair. That uh, right. actually, the funny thing is, I'll say quickly on that show, it was ending, and I'll never forget because it was 2004, and he was ripping into Carrie, and every insult he threw at Carrie, I threw one back about Bush, like boom, boom, boom. I wouldn't stop. I wasn't going to let him have the last word. So that's why I finally cut my mic, cut all sound from the show and called me an asshole. <laughs> I just, uh, what <laughs> an asshole. asshole. So I want you to be the best asshole you can be right now on my show and tell the audience where to find you. Okay. You, wonderful people, you can find me at C. Schechter. At, uh, we're at the Blue Amp channel currently because our rebranding is taking fucking forever. It's going to be Cliff's Edge, but... Uh, I am 200 and change shy from 40,000 subscribers. Get you it. can be the ones that help put me over that big number. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, if you go by today, we have videos and be dropping on both your favorite person, portions of Entry Marge. Uh, we've got a good one on her, and we've got a good one on uh, your other favorite person, uh, good old Lick uh, the Lips, uh, Lindsey Graham. You ever see when he does that and you want to puke? Yeah, that guy. So... Well, we've got some good shit coming. Well, um, I got one more thing before you leave. I got a gift for you. Okay, I know you like the uh, I know you like the the picture of Trump and OJ, but I got one more breaking Ooh. news here. Um, this is, is it Trump this, and Genghis Khan. No, no, this is OJ's brand new book. It's it's an uh, image from his brand new book. Uh, if I broke into heaven, here is OJ Simpson's <laughs> "If I Broke Into Heaven" straight from the laboratory. Our local lab rat uh, has provided us this image. That well, your local broke. lab rat, good yes. fucking work. Uh, if That's... I broke into heaven, uh, from OJ Simpson, it would probably look there. a lot like that. But uh, but the angels would be tossing the fucking tridents at him to fucking just <laughs> whack. Him. Oh, well, we'll try to get you the image of. Of the convicted or the, the the adjudicated rapist, the the indicted criminal, and the dead guy, we'll try to get you that image, and we'll try to get you the image uh, of the new book, the new O.J. Simpson book. If I broke into heaven, uh, Cliff Shecker, thanks for joining us, audience. Don't go anywhere, even if you're on YouTube. I promise, I'm not going to cut you off today, Cliff. Uh, you have saved the day here for the YouTube people because I'm not cutting them off and going directly to Twitch. We kept you on because we're on YouTube. So thank you, my I friend. I can. Thank well, you, thanks, thanks for having me on. And yes. thanks for being here, guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I promise we'll be right back on YouTube and all the other channels right after this. What the fuck is wrong with you people? It's a rhetorical question at best. We'll be right back on the Tony Michaels Podcast. Fellow Patriots. What would you do if there was a Trump supporter right in front of you, crying in pain because they have to live under communist tyranny? We know what you would do. You'd reach out and give that true American a hand. Now, here's your chance. For only $50 a day, you can help us help those true Americans recover from Biden's socialist reign of terror. These are those Trump supporters, and this is that moment. Send your donation via Venmo to the real president, Donald J. Trump. It's only $50 a day. <clears throat> Recurring. 
And it means you'll get these Trump supporters the critical help they so desperately need to survive under this false regime. Please donate now, because those Trump supporters you just saw can't wait another moment. Fuck em, fuck em, fuck em, fuck em, fuck em, fuck em. We're back to the Tony Michaels Podcast. Welcome back to the show. You're on YouTube. We're live, live, live on YouTube. That's right. I didn't cut you off. I think we can do some content that won't get us banned. YouTube won't put us in YouTube jail. I told you earlier that sometimes there's good reasons to go to jail. I actually believe that. Sometimes there's good reasons to go to YouTube jail. You know what I mean? Get locked up. Get them locked up over there on YouTube. And this might be one of them. I'm going to show you a clip of the fentanyl fear her here. Um, this is uh, fucking hilarious. Hilarious. Uh, he goes into a Chick-fil-A to order some some milkshakes and some chicken. Uh, and he's talking to all the employees there. Now, this looks like a hostage situation. Um, obviously, this Chick-fil-A uh, has no customers besides this guy. Look at this. What the fuck? You think that this guy was so popular if he showed up at a Chick-fil-A, there'd be a, a million people. There's a million people at the Chick-fil-A to support Trump. But um, they made all the workers come out and uh, greet him. And, you know, and again, these are these are. Um, the the employees there, Chick Fil A. So they're probably just making right at or just above minimum wage, depending on where they're at in the country, right? Now listen to what this fucking scumbag tells them. Listen. We want we want thirty milkshakes. Thirty. I'm gonna eat thirty milkshakes. And oh, by the way. With my milkshakes, I would love to have some chicken, please. I know it's not Kentucky Fried, but it is filleted, so I want some chicken. He ordered 30 milkshakes. Now, I'm one to believe. I'm one to believe <laughs> that this fat fuck is actually going to eat those milkshakes, right? He's not ordering them from anywhere else. And he's like, and then we'll take care of all the customers. We'll take care of them. He didn't say we'll pay for their food. And he said, we'll take care of them. So he, he's he's wording things in a way that he's going to leave with 30 milkshakes and chicken, and he's not going to pay for a fucking thing. That's what he's doing here, by the way. I want to let you know that's what the fuck he's doing. He's saying this shit in this hostage situation where the owner of this Chick-fil-A, because Chick-fil-A's are corporate and they are franchise too. But whoever is in control of this Chick-fil-A has made all these workers come out and greet this fat fuck who is going to order 30 milkshakes for himself and chicken, and he's going to act like he's going to pay for the entire restaurant, but he's going to fleece this place of milkshakes, milkshakes, and fucking chicken. Now, the one thing, though, that he says in the latter part of this 17-second clip is absolutely fucking amazing. Watch this. Business good? Is business good? Are you making a lot of money? Are you getting rich? These are the fucking fast food workers who who in some states are fucking saying pay us $20, motherfuckers, because we can't live. And this son of a bitch is standing there talking to the workers who make minimum wage, talking to them, and he's totally fucking oblivious. Number one, if the Chick-fil-A is doing so goddamn good in Biden's America and they're making all kinds of money and rich, the Biden economy, the dark Brandon economy must be fucking lit, man. Even at the fucking Chick-fil-A, even the workers are getting fucking rich. He doesn't, he can't even stay on his own fucking message. He can't even stay on his own fucking message. I, and someone says that I have a good point. I always have good points, big Steph fan. I always have good points. I always look at it through a different fucking lens than most people. Most people look at this at, at, through the, the milkshake lens. I'm looking at this through him fucking degrading these people. Here, here, and, 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 Every single one, it looks like every single one of these uh, workers are all black. 
Every one of them. Most of them are fucking women. And I would almost goddamn guarantee that the, this job that they have is not their only fucking job. This is definitely not these women's only fucking job. It's just not. It's just not their only job. And the reason why I know that is because there's no way that these people probably are able to live off what Chick-fil-A pays them hourly wage and only gives them 28 hours so they don't have to qualify for fucking benefits because they're not a full-time employee. Okay? And this is the reason why people all around the country who work, and none of these fucking people are teenagers, it doesn't look like either. Maybe the one in front, maybe the one in front could be a teenager. It's possible. This one right here, uh, th these two, maybe these two look kind of young, and I can't see this in here, but most of them look like fucking adults. They're adults. They're, they're grown-ass people. These are the jobs that grown-ass people have. These are not fucking teenagers working at the McDonald's, okay? That's not what they're asking for $20 an hour to get paid a decent fucking wage. A decent fucking wage is what they want. And this fucking dick smoker here is fucking just absolutely just degrading them by standing there saying, oh, is business good? You're making so you're getting rich. You're getting they're making the fucking franchise owner rich. You piece of trash, you motherfucker. And you're going to stand there and fucking you're going to stand there and, and spit in their fucking faces. You you piece of shit, you. You piece of shit, you. But the thing is, is he's completely fucking oblivious. Completely fucking oblivious. And the reason why is because he stomps all over his own message that our country is shit and it's trash and the economy is horrible and no one can make any fucking money. And here he is in the Chick-fil-A, the only fucking customer because they shut this place down just so this, and really, honestly, it's probably because most people don't want to stand at the food counter smelling a shitty fucking diaper. It's probably the reason why the only, the only reason why he's the only one standing at the fucking food counter. I don't even know if this is fucking legal in most states where a guy like this and smells like this and has a shitty diaper like this can be this close to fucking food preparation. It's probably against some health code somewhere. But I cannot fucking believe that the that the commentary around this, and I don't even know why the Biden campaign hasn't caught on to this, that this fucking asshole is standing there spitting on these fucking people. Just fucking spitting on them. Number one, he's totally stomping on his own fucking lie about the economy when he says this stupid shit. Because they are. The fucking people who own this Chick-fil-A are making bank, man. They're making fucking bank. They're fucking going to the bank every day with that profit dollar, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. And I guarantee goddamn to you it's a fucking white dude that probably owns this fucking Chick-fil-A. Making their fucking riches off the backs of black people. Working for minimum fucking wage. And this son of a bitch has the gall to stand there in his shitty diaper at the food counter and try to get 30 milkshakes and some chicken for free. Because that's what he's doing. That's what he always does. He's always fucking trying to get the freebies. You fucking piece of trash, you. You motherfucker. Look at that fucking suit, too. Look at this motherfucker. Can't even afford a fitted fucking suit. Can't even afford a fitted fucking suit, man. And you're going to come in here and try to get milkshakes, 30 milkshakes, so you can drink those fat, you fat fuck, for free. And then you're going to spit in the faces of the people who are going to make your 30 fucking milkshakes that you're going to steal by saying, are they getting rich? These people are not getting fucking rich, you, you slimy piece of shit. All right, I'm about done. I'm a, I'm about done. I promise. But I, 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 that fucking makes my blood boil when I watch this son of a bitch do this stupid shit, and that people don't even fucking see what he's doing. And I know these people are standing there thinking it like you son of. Look at this guy in the back. He's like you son of a bitch. <laughs> you, you son of a fucking bitch. How dare you use us as your black props? Because that's the other thing he's fucking doing here. And yeah, I'm going to say it. He's using them as his fucking black 
props. Look, I went into the Chick-fil-A and a bunch of black people told me that they're getting rich working at Chick-fil-A. What do they need $20 an hour for? He's going to probably say that shit, motherfucker. He, he, either him or one of his fucking dumbass skeezy surrogates are probably going to say that shit. Donald Trump went into a Chick-fil-A the other day and talked to some black people. I mean, not a normal thing that he does. He doesn't normally talk to the black normies. It's normally the, the Candace Owens and that the fucking weird sleepy brain surgeon. Those are the black people that he normally talks to. Oh, yeah, and O.J. Simpson, you know, back in the 90s when they were... <laughs> Fucking models, you know what I mean? Models. Yeah, okay. The fuck out of here. Using them as fucking props to act like he likes black people. And he thinks black people are getting rich. When these motherfuckers, they can't even, pr they probably have two and three jobs just to make fucking rent. And then they're going to go out and these skeezy surrogates are going to say, and Trump's going to say, well, what do they need $20 now? Hell, I talked to some fucking, I talked to some blackies the other day at the Chick-fil-A and they said they were getting rich off minimum wage. What do you need more money for? Fucking sons of bitches, man. Sons of fucking bitches. And the media is not going to say this shit the way I'm saying it right now. Fuck no. There ain't a god. There ain't too many fucking white people out there that'll just say what I'm fucking saying right now. They just won't. They're scared. They're scared to say that shit, but it needs to be fucking said. It needs to be fucking said. It's enough of this bullshit where this son of a bitch pisses on the heads of fucking lower class people. Acting like he's one of us. Like he's one of the downtrodden. Like he's got plight. Get the fuck out of here, you motherfucker. The only plight you got is your tailor sucks. That's it. And even if you have a fucking tailor and you're a new makeup artist, I don't know why you I don't know why you fucking chose such a cheap ass makeup artist, but goddamn, and that fucking hair of yours, fuck me. It used to be at, you know, at least halfway fucking decent. We could believe that it might be real. Now you know that that shit is just fucking hair flaps sewn to your goddamn skull. Hmm. All right. Is that enough? <laughs> trying to make clips for all the team here i'm trying to get some good clips uh some good one-liners bang 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 you know what i mean <laughs> ah deborah i know that's what i'm trying to do and it's mj's birthday god damn it it's mj's birthday i want her to have a good trump rant uh, for her for her for her birthday so all right we'll move on we'll move we'll move on from the chick-fil-a uh let's let's do a little bit of uh grifty griff grift here Let's do that. Um, so I want, uh, uh, I'm going to do two grifts here, by the way. I'm going to mention because um, uh, Cliff did not, he forgot to mention, last week he mentioned it, but he forgot to mention he's going to be at the Sexy Liberal Show in Minneapolis this Saturday night uh, with Stephanie Miller. I know we, we got big Steph fan over on Twitch and we got a lot of Stephanie Miller fans here in the fuck em fam. Uh, so if you're in the Minneapolis area on Saturday night, look up the sexy liberal show there in Minneapolis. You can go check out. You might be able to meet uh, Steph and Cliff in person. I think Hal Sparks is going to be there. Also, John Fugel saying, I think it's what uh, Cliff said last week. So go check that out for Cliff. But let's get to the Tony Michaels grift. That's like, let's, let's grift him a bit. Why not? Hell. We got them here. All right. Um, <laughs> go to the TonyMichaels.com and hit subscribe at the top of the page. Do that for me. That is free. It doesn't cost you a single nickel. And then I want you to go on down to the Patreon membership. We are gearing up to do a lot of new things on Patreon. My Patreon is going to be changing. So if you're a paid member now, make sure... Uh, you pay attention. But if you're not a paid member, go follow me over there and become a paid member. Five dollars to start. You're going to get access to some exclusive content and some behind the scenes stuff uh, that we're working on. So the Patreon is going to be changing. So do that and also join the Discord. But if you want to give live show support, one of the best ways to do it is the Venmo Super Chat. You know that I don't get to monetize on YouTube. It's one of the things we've been talking about lately. Uh, and you know, we, we love to fix that. So I can't get super chats like all your, all your best commentators out there, you know, all your best commentators, they say all kinds of bullshit into the microphone to get you to put super chats in. I can't receive super chats. That's one reason why 
I'm it's kind of like, well, Tony's telling the truth because he can't make money off fucking lies and misinformation anyways. Because I can't. The YouTube doesn't allow me. But what they what what we can do is a roundabout way if you want to support the show live and you want to get your comment on air. You just go to the TonyMichaels.com, hit the Venmo Super Chat. You can Venmo me a message. Make sure to include the platform and your handle, and I'll try to bring up that comment on the show as a Super Chat like they do like they do on their uh, their shows on YouTube. You know what I mean? If I got a Super Chat, like, yeah, you think through the Super Chat, that sort of thing. Uh, so we're going to be doing that grift as well. So if you want to get your message in, on the Tony Michaels podcast, go to the Tony Michaels.com, click Venmo Super Chat. The other thing I want to tell you is the reason why you want to join the Discord and you want to join the Patreon as a paid member is we are going to bring phone from the audience. That's right. You're going to be able to phone in on this show on a segment here in the coming weeks. We're going to make it to where you can phone in on the show. Uh, so you're going to want to follow Patreon and you're going to want to get in on the Discord. And the reason why, the reason why is because that is how you're going to phone in on the show is through the Discord. Um, so that's that's my uh, that's my grifting for today. So go to the Tony uh, hit the Venmo Super Chat if you'd like to send me a message. Uh, yeah, any amount will get you on the show, whatever you want to send. Uh, just s- send your amount and the message, your handle and what platform you watch on. And I'll try to bring it up on the show. And then also get in on the Discord and the, the Patreon because we're going to have phone in from the audience. I don't know exactly what we're going to call it. Maybe it's phone of fuckery. That's a pretty good one, isn't it? The phone of fuckery is maybe what we'll call it. The phone of a fuckery. And it'll just be a segment where you get to call in. Where you get to call in to the show and you get to talk to me through Discord. It's going to be awesome. We tested it a couple weeks ago and it worked. It worked then. I don't, <laughs> yeah, it's fucking computers. Also, the other thing I want you to do is go to, you know, we broadcast live from the Antifa corporate headquarters here in Kami Falls, Missouri. We broadcast. And we also have a gift shop here at the corporate headquarters of antifa in commie falls missouri just click store at the tony michaels and you can go into the commie falls gift shop the commie falls gift shop features all kinds of great products and trinkets for your enjoyment as you're out there spreading your fuckery and sharpening your battle axe for democracy preparing for battle at the ballot box one of my new favorites is this shirt right here democracy is a joint effort Boy, there's no better message than that. Democracy is a joint effort. And that's why we're sharpening our battle axes. So go to thetonymichaels.com, click the store button at the top of the page, and grab your democracy is a joint effort so you can join the joint effort and partake in democracy and sharpen your battle axe. So do all those things. Engage in your democracy. These grifts have a purpose, and that'll help support our laboratory and the show here on the Tony Michaels podcast. All right. I have a couple more clips I want to show you um, before we leave, because I just. (laughs) Uh, There's a couple funny ones. I I need to be careful and pick one here because, you know, I I've only got about five minutes left and I got to make sure we can get through whatever we're going to get through here. And I. You know, I mean, I talk and I get commentary and that sort of thing. But there's one in particular clip that I want to show you. And I kind of missed it the other day. And I have no fucking idea how I missed this. I have no fucking clue how I missed this. But you know that Kevin McCarthy used to be the speaker. He is the shortest serving speaker in the history of America. He's a loser. He's a piece of shit, right? Um, But he hangs out with other pieces of shit. And he's been rubbing elbows and made deals with other chomo pedophile type pieces of shit. And he let us all know that in an interview that he did just the other day. Let's listen. Go ahead, Kevin McCarthy. Give us the deets on pedo Matt. You made a lot of concessions in all the that, negotiations. Oh, I did. Okay. Okay. Is that Let's the, get to the bottom. Right? That, no, that no, 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 is no, no, such no. a misnomer right. in life. Let me give you the truth about that. And I'll give you the truth why I'm not speaker. It's because one person 
a member of Congress wanted me to stop an ethics complaint because he slept with a 17 year old. Whoa, 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 wait a second. What did he say? Did he, did he just, hang on, hang on a second. Let me, I, hang on, hang on. Let me back this up. Wait, 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 just a minute. What, what did he say? <laughs> and I'll give you the truth why I'm not speaker. It's because one person, a member of Congress wanted me to stop an ethics complaint because he slept with a 17 year old. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, if you're not aware, the person that Kevin McCarthy is talking about here is Congressman Matt Gatz. That's right. I call him Matt Gatz because he does not deserve to be called by what he says his name is pronounced as. It's Matt Gatz. And Kevin McCarthy here is claiming that the reason why Matt Getz voted or brought the motion to vacate the chair is because Kevin McCarthy would not help Matt Getz in the effort to squash an ethics investigation for Matt Getz fucking a 17-year-old girl. Now, we know that Mark Wayne Mullen, Senator Mark Wayne Mullen, I don't know if you know this guy or not. He's an asshole. He's the one that fucking got cucked by Bernie Sanders. Do you remember this? He was going to fight the mob boss. You know, he, he's going to fight him. And Bernie Sanders like, sit down, motherfucker. You ain't doing shit. And he sat down like a little bitch. You remember that? Bernie Sanders bitched Mark Wayne Mullen. Now, Mark Wayne Mullen claims that when Mark Wayne Mullen, before he was a senator, he was a congressperson. And on the fucking floor of the House, Matt Gatz was showing Mark Wayne Mullen underage porn. Showing, showing other members of Congress underage porn on his, on his fucking phone. And they did nothing. They did nothing. They still have done nothing. They haven't reported it to the authorities. They haven't made sure that the fucking FBI gets a hold of Matt Gantz's phone where this child porn fucking exists. Hmm. Seems kind of funny. Seems like they've been protecting Matt Gantz for some reason. Maybe it's because they like protecting their own. And they like protecting scumbags. Until those scumbags turn on them. Until those chomos... Until those chomos like Matt Gatz. And that's right. I'm saying it, Matt. You're a fucking chomo, bitch. You're a chomo. And that's what you'll be known as when you finally go to federal prison. Is a fucking chomo. That's what they refer to. Uh, guys like Matt Gatz. Of the persuasion. Of the age of girls that they like. In federal prison, they know them as chomos. And really, honestly, when when Matt Gantz actually goes to the federal federal prison, what's a chomo? Well, just Google it. <laughs> I don't even know if I, I'm still on YouTube, so I don't even know if I can say those words. Right? Just Google chomo, chomo. So they call it in prison. They're not called pedos or pedophiles in prison. They're called chomos. And there's special federal prisons for the chomos, for the pedos, like Matt Getz, who traffic young women, who drug young women, who buy alcohol and, and, and cocaine for young women, who bring them across state lines to fuck them and have other people fuck them. Because um, listen to Kevin McCarthy here, because Kevin McCarthy has a moment with the truth here. This is a fucking serial liar. And he's adhering to the truth. Listen. An ethics complaint that started before I ever became speaker. And that's illegal. And I'm not going to get in the middle. Did he do it or not? I don't know. But an ethics is looking at it. There's other people in jail because of it. <laughs> he's like, I don't know if he did it. But there's other motherfuckers in jail that did, or in, jail, in prison that did the shit. Joel Greenberg. I don't know if you guys remember the saga of Joel Greenberg or not. But you know Joel Greenberg was a DeSantis guy too? Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. It seems like all these Republicans make the bed of the Chomos. I don't know how I fucking missed this clip. I, I seriously, I, I don't know how I missed the clip. I was going to, I would have shown it to you yesterday, but here we are today at the end of the show. And I figured I'd serve you up on a platter, something really to get fucking fired up about and go fucking spread some fuckery on the internet right before we end the show. That's what we like to do here at the Tony Michaels podcast. So make sure that you get in on the fuckery and make sure, make sure that you are sharpening your battle axe and the best way to do that the best way to sharpen your battle axe is go to that discord server and get in on the fuckery and spread that shit not just around the internet like fucking herpes 
but get out there in real life. And I'm telling you, there are resources inside that Discord for you to sharpen your battle axe because you are the weapon that we are going to use to save our democracy. It is the pro-democracy coalition who is the coalition of the battle axes who will go do war at the ballot box. And we are all in this together. You are not alone in this. You are not alone. Do not be afraid. We are here for you and with you. So get to the Discord server. Go to thetonymichaels.com and come back here every single fucking weekday for two full hours. Whether it's on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook. I know YouTube's kind of a, you know, a crapshoot right now. But we'll work through that. I promise. Don't go anywhere because we'll be here tomorrow. Same time, same motherfucking place as always. Tony is always here and always live for two full hours. Don't forget it. And we're here for you. Go to that Discord server, thetonymichaels.com. Same time, same place tomorrow. Surf's up, motherfuckers. You've been listening to the Tony Michaels Podcast. Podcast. In your face commentary of current events and political news. No rules, no boundaries. I think we've made that perfectly clear. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll be back soon. In the meantime, follow Tony on social media at the Tony Michaels. And until next time, raise a fist and repeat after me. Fuck them. Murphy's Mealborn, head ass speaking. Uh, but <laughs> Trump has taken credit for overturning Roe time and again. Let's listen to this. The fact that I was able to terminate Roe v. Wade after 50 years of trying, I was even, I was so honored to have done it. And what I did by killing. Roe v. Wade, which everyone said was impossible, because for 54 years they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of Roe v. Wade. For 52 years, people have wanted to end Roe v. Wade to get it back to the states. We did that. It was an incredible thing, an incredible achievement. Uh, But (laughs) Trump is... just a psycho liar. There's not a truth in the skeletons of the Democrat Party, and this is a perfect representative. The man is a liar. Uh, they're, all, they're all liars, and everybody knows that now. That's why we're supporting Donald Trump, because we want to take America back based on the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and freedom. It's, it's so simple, even guitar players can figure it out. You know, folks, I want just a... In the end, you know, we we know life does begin at conception, and I think people will decide, do you protect that life differently from conception as the baby grows, uh, post-delivery, you protect children different than you protect adults? Do you protect pre-born children differently than you protect, uh, you know, people now? And that is going to play out differently in states, and I think Republicans should...